I'm Dr. Fatih Abazabachi. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, where I'm also the interventional advanced endoscopy fellow in the section of therapeutic endoscopy. Today, I'm here to discuss a review article in an upcoming Mayo Clinic proceedings issue titled Peer Review Bias, a Critical Review. I'm the co-first author on this paper, presenting on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Samir Hafar and Dr. Hassan Murad. As all of you are aware, various types of bias and confounding have been described in the biomedical literature. When we think of bias, however, we typically think of that which can affect a study before, during, or after the intervention has been delivered. The peer review process, however, in itself can also introduce bias. While many academicians pride themselves on being unbiased, the data suggests otherwise. For instance, many studies found that women scientists and scientists from certain minorities experience bias when it comes to getting grants, getting papers published, or advancing their academic career. In a study by Ginther and colleagues published in Science in 2011, the authors examined the probability of receiving NIH R01 funding depending on the applicant's self-reported ethnicity. After adjusting for the applicant's scholarly background, previous training, country of origin, preceding research awards, publication records, and employer attributes, the investigators still found that Black or African-American applicants remain 10 percentage points less likely than Caucasians to be granted NIH funding. Similarly, a very recent Canadian study published in The Lancet in February 2019 by Whitman et al. showed not only that gender caps in grant funding exist, but they are also attributable to less favorable assessments of women as principal investigators, not the quality of their proposed research or the science they propose. This is a clear and present threat to the integrity of the scientific method, and the compelling ethical and moral rationale necessitates improving the peer review process, hence the writing of our review. In this figure, we show a proposed framework demonstrating how the peer review process can introduce various types of bias. We see that the uh, bias and confounding does indeed uh, entail the scientific experimentation, but also after publication, if the paper reaches publication, peer review bias can affect the outcomes, such as failure of peer reviewers to assess the quality of the studies and uh, such publication of worse studies, poor reproducibility among reviewers, inability to recruit knowledgeable reviewers, attrition of reviewers, um, reviewers forcing changes, such as asking for additional adjustments, post hoc subgroup analyses, deleting or combining outcomes. Sometimes bias is due to author characteristics based on their meritocracy. Other times the bias is due to the reviewer characteristics, such as idiosyncratic leniency, versus cultural background, um, results-based bias, such as confirmation bias or conservatism, and lastly, conflict of interest. The single blinded peer review is the most pervasive type of peer review in academia, and typically in biomedical academia. This poses asymmetry that may lead unnecessarily to direct or indirect biases. The single blinded method will sway editors and reviewers, especially when they are unsure about their ability to make an objective judgment of the quality of a research paper to investigate the background of the authors, their claim, their web of influence, and their overall meritocracy beyond the limits of the actual presented work. To combat this phenomenon, other models of peer review has been suggested and applied. For instance, many academic journals in philosophy and the social sciences follow a triple-blind model wherein the identity of the authors and institutions are removed and coded even to the handling editor of the journal. Although such a model was cumbersome in decades past, it is much easier to apply in this era of the electronic submission process. The double-blind peer review system is supported by equipoise and fair play principles. The triple and quadruple blind systems, which have also been described, are not commonly used in biomedical literature. An open peer review paradigm introduces skin in the game heuristic principles for both authors and reviewers. This paradigm has indeed 
been shown to offer a small favorable effect on the quality of published reports. In our exposition, we present on the basis of a comprehensive literature search of PubMed from its inception until October 2017, various possible mechanisms by which the peer review process can distort research results, and we also discuss the evidence supporting different strategies that may mitigate this bias. We believe it's time to improve the quality, transparency, and accountability of the peer review system in academia. I hope that you will enjoy our review articles, and I would like to thank the Mayo Clinic Proceedings for offering us the venue to share our work, and I appreciate your time in viewing this video. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.